Hey, welcome to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. Still loving that intro. Oh, I'm yeah, so glad nice you part. found that. It's great. Uh, welcome, guys. Yeah. Welcome to uh, our first like real hit the ground running one episode a week business. She and Diego. Uh, <laughs> thanks for tuning in, watching, listening, doing it, however you're doing it, uh, on all the places, podcast app, YouTube, SoundCloud, wherever you found us, how you found us. Thank you and welcome, guys. All of the above awesome things you should check out yep. right now. Stop yeah. this episode. Go check those things out. Yeah. Don't actually stop the episode, but go look them up. Yeah. Now. There's links um, um, in descriptions, in bios, in various places. Go find them if you're so inclined. Yeah. That's, and the big one of that. those links uh, that we wanted to mention is the website, which is brand new. We've got a few yeah. articles posted there already. Um, I know I've posted Insightful. two, maybe three at this point because we're recording this a few days in advance. Right. I know you've been working on a few. Yeah. I'm a, I, I, pr- I pretend to be a busy guy. Uh, He's not. He just. Nah. I sit in a room, in a dark room, and eat Ritz crackers <laughs> all day long. Which is uh, a normal human behavior. Yeah. Um, it's great for my blood sugar. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't I do not do much, but when I do do stuff, it's not writing articles. <laughs> do do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll have some up there uh, pretty yes. soon um, once we have some interesting things to talk about, and we have a plethora yep. of those on the website. Um, so definitely go check it out. You can yeah. subscribe on that just, website. That was so. such a twisty, turny sentence. I just that was tried a very f- interesting sentence. Sorry about that. Way to form good things. Um, but you can <laughs> subscribe to us on there, and that way you'll get regular updates. So anytime yeah. an article gets posted, as well as any other content on the website, you will see it there. Um, and you can subscribe everywhere else, of course, as we have mentioned many times in the past. Yeah. Specifically gonna, 56 times. I'm going to try not to click my pen this entire episode. <laughs> it's, I need to... <laughs> I don't trust you with that. Here, do you want this pen? Yeah, give me that. <laughs> I don't actually need a pen at this point. Well, good. <laughs> All right, so here's the deal, guys. We are going to start off, start off, excuse me, with the random card of the day. I think yeah. you're going to talk about the random I am, card of the day. I am, uh, and I'm excited. I would say talk one? about it, but we're not planned at all. No. Um, but yeah, I'm ready. I love this segment, so let's, let's jump into it. All right, the picture didn't love that's fine <laughs> i know uh, what this card is shu yun the silent tempest yes it's a legendary uh, i wish i could refresh it again and get this back because i want to see what it looks like but i can't uh legendary creature it's a monk three two. Oh my man oh yeah duh i got you uh yeah sorry okay three two <laughs> two colors one blue with a prowess uh we all know what prowess does whenever you cast a non-creature spell you may pay hybrid mana either Two red, two white, one red, one red, whatever. If you do target creature, gains double strike until end of turn. Um, interesting card. This w- this came out, I mean, recently, of course. This is from um, Fate Reforged. And this is in a cycle where they tried to smush three colors together to try yeah. and encourage the, like, what were these called? The bands? The war band? The, uh, the clans. clans. The clans. These were the clans, though. The clans, yeah. yeah. Right. So it was basically, that's where, like, Jeskai and Sultai. Right, and- right. All those random and this, things this that was, aren't real. This was Jess Guy. This is Jess Guy. Yeah, America. America for those <clears> actual <throat> Magic players. Um, <laughs> right. right. So yeah, that, that was in those cycles. Um, there were other various cards that did that. There was like a um, that wasn't a Jund one, but anyway. Um, thoughts on the card, Gev? Um, so here's my thing. Yeah, this actually made uh, a bit of a splash in Commander, which is relevant, uh, but also Topical. in Tiny Leaders which for those of you who played during Tiny Leaders was sort of like a dumbed down commander. It was three CMC or less. Mm -hmm. uh, So everything had to be below that. And this was actually one of the Tiny Leader commanders that that actually made a comeback because a lot of the the clan leaders, I would say, from Fate Reforged uh, actually worked really well as Tiny Leader commanders. However... Tiny Leaders is now not a thing anymore, so... I mean, it is. People it play right? it, but it's like, not really a big it just, format. It feels just like a worse commander. So. That's what it is, basically. So, yeah. uh, aside from that, I mean, this card, it's great and limited. You take it in limited. I think it's fine. Yeah, I think so. Um, but outside of that, it's just kind of a bulk rare. Like, it's really not that good. Yeah, uh, I commander mean... Commander is the only place I could see it being viable. Well, yeah, Commander, and I think you're absolutely right in limited, because, I mean, Double Strike... Yeah, double Dude. strike is super good. Dude. Um, the prowess trigger is relevant, and a 3-2 three, for 3 is Ish. decent. I yeah, mean, I mean, it's relevant. Now. I don't think you're really ever swinging out with this dude. Um, no, no, probably I not. mean, that being said, you can do some really cutesy tricks with him, right? Mm-hmm. Where you swing, um, also casting bolt. Yeah. After blocks, he gets prowess and target himself to get double strike. Yeah, kill, I mean... Kill a thing. I mean, there's, there's cute, fun stuff you can do with this that 
I'm the cool sh- thing you know. that I really liked about Prowess was it encouraged sort of aggressive behavior during that block. Yes. So the reason being, you could swing in and then without actually having a combat trick, you had a combat trick. Mm-hmm. Because as long as you had an instant of, of any kind that maybe just drew you a card, right? Or did something like that, it also then buffed your guys. And so right. that's why Prowess was actually a really, really good mechanic in Limited because it sort of made for some interesting interactions, specifically during the combat phase, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, which you I don't think, always see. So, uh, Prowess is one of my favorite effects. Yeah, um, it was very clever. Uh, it was like a fixed and better heroic. Uh, yeah, heroic was a I, little rough. I wanted so badly for it to be good, <laughs> and it almost is, but it's just not there. So, no. um, I'm sure there's a build you can. There's a deck probably that's yeah. playable with heroic. Yeah. But, but no, not, not relevant anymore. Really, all that good. Yeah. <laughs> um, that being said, I like him. I probably value him more than Kevin does. Probably. Um, because I, I don't like, think he's a bad guard, though. Sure. I just I like those QC combat tricks. Mm-hmm. And if I was gonna build a, a fun deck, a funky deck, yeah, around him, I I, I would do that. That's and the thing I do. This worked really well for the Jeskai deck also because it was a lot of tempo plays, a lot of instants and things like that. So the prowess trigger True. as well it's as true. the gaining double strike until end of turn was very easy to actually activate, right? Like that oh, wasn't yeah. a difficult thing for you to do, especially in a limited format because you're going to be taking a lot of those instants. So yeah, a good card. Not my favorite card by any means, no. but it's pretty good. Yeah, he doesn't doesn't really go in constructed, but no. Again, fun. maybe commander because he can Perhaps. be a commander, but that's about it. Yeah. Um, okay. Cool. Well, a good card of the day, uh, relatively speaking. <laughs> I mean, um, we had some bad ones. <laughs> it's true. I don't hate it. So yeah. yeah. Um. So we uh, asked you guys uh, last week, what legacy deck would you like to hear us talk about? Uh, this week we've probably already asked it. Uh, what's the modern deck? So go comment down below on that wherever that is. Instagram. Um, you can even comment this video. You can if you want. Yeah. We will. We will check everything. Um, but this week we're going to talk about legacy decks. Uh, the one that we decided to go with was Four Color Stone Blade, uh, suggested by Esper MTG. We had a lot of other interesting suggestions. Uh, to the to the individual that said the deck with like Blood Pet and something else. Interesting. I don't know that that's a deck because I don't think Blood Pet is a very good card. Um, here, I'll let you see if you can find Blood Pet um, while I start in the to this deck deck. So yeah, there we go. Maybe it is. I don't know, but I don't know of the deck that that's run in. We'll find it. Maybe. I don't know off the top of my head, but there's probably something you can abuse with that. Probably. Uh, yeah, mm. that's interesting. Um, so anyway, to talk about Four Color Stone Blade, um, what's really cool about this is it takes advantage of all the great fixing that you do get in Legacy with actual okay. dual lands, Deathrite Shaman, uh, let's Death Rite. Noble Hierarch. There's a lot of good stuff in this. So. We'll go very quickly through the lands first. There's nothing of any, like, super surprise here. Um, It's about a 20 land deck, so you're going to run between 18 and 20. Most of the lists I found were 20. Uh, Four Flooded Strand, four Polluted Delta, one Scrubland, three Tropical Island, two Underground Sea, two Tundra, and four Wasteland, a full playset of Wasteland. Wow, that's uh, weird. Which is really, really interesting to me. But I do think, again, looking at Noble Hierarch as well as Deathrite Shaman, you're going to be able to yeah. get your fixing, so it's kind of okay. Does it have birds, too? or It just... does not have birds. So, you what? run death right over birds, though. And not Hierarch over birds? No, oh. no. Uh, Hierarch's guess, Exalted trigger yeah, is important. Yeah, I guess Exalted's nicer. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, okay. So, we already mentioned two of the creatures with death right and Noble Hierarch. There are about 18. There's 18 in the list we're using, but it sort of varies a bit. Yeah. Uh, four death right, four Noble Hierarch, the full play sets of both two Leovold Emissary of Trust, which is just a fantastic value card. Yeah, um, it really is. We've talked before about the commander combo, and I'm sure we'll talk about it this episode a little bit, uh, but Leovold, it shuts off so many strategies. Anything yeah. trying to draw cards, draw into their combo pieces, they just can't do it. And then if they get to, if they want to remove it, you get value from it. So mm-hmm. it makes it so much just nicer. It's such yeah. a good value card. And that's really what this deck is. It's just incredible amounts of value uh, for Stoneforge Mystic, namesake card of the deck, uh, it brings with it some of the craziest equipment in Magic, which we'll talk about. Uh, and then no for kidding. True Name Nemesis, which is actually sort of your plan A for winning with this deck. Um, you okay. sort of want to get the True Name out, equip it with some stuff because they can't do too much about it, right. and then just swing in for the win. 
Uh, so that is sort of your plan A for the win, just to a, give you a heads up. Yeah, not a bad idea. I like sticking <laughs> powerful things on creatures that can make value. From exactly. So. Um, and again, we get a variety of colors in this deck, and that's just because there's such great fixing. We're able yeah. to do that uh, very, very easily. So very, very cool. Uh, moving into the sort of instant sorceries Planeswalkers package, we have two Planeswalkers off the bat, one Gideon, ally of Zendikar, which I think is really interesting. Yeah. Um, and one Jace the Mind Sculptor, no Naturally. surprise there. <laughs> um, it's in blue, so you play Jace. Right. Um, this does get a good amount of control slash removal and things like that. So three Abrupt Decay uh, to sort of handle a lot of permanence and things like that that are low to the ground, and it also is uncounterable. Um, four Brainstorm, so that's your draw package. It works great with fetch lands and shuffle effects, things like that. Sure. Uh, four Days and four Force of Will which are sort of your counter packages. You, If you're running blue, you're probably going to be running a counter yeah, package of some kind. And there's not a reason not to with no. force if you have blue in your deck. It's, it's just so good. Yeah. Uh, free counters are great. Yeah. Ma basically free. Um, two swords to plowshares to sort of deal with any of the higher end problematic creatures. They sort of get you there. Uh, mm. One batter skull, one sword mm. of fire and ice, and one Umizawa's Jite, all to work with the Stoneforge Mystic. Yep. So uh, these are the best equipment cards in Magic. Period. I, mean, I don't think there's yeah. an argument there, right? There's like, definitely not. So I think <clears throat> Fire and Ice is the best sword, in, yeah. in my opinion. Um, um, I really like the GTA. I think it's the best of the equipments yeah, ever. Um, I mean, we <laughs> talked about it on the live episode, too. We did, so, actually, yeah. Um, um, yeah, so makes sense. Basically, like I said, the plan is to get your true name nemesis out there, buff it with all of these equipment spells, get the Exalted trigger every time you attack, and then deal sort of trace amounts of damage with Deathrite Shaman or just ramp into things with Deathrite Shaman. Cool. Um, and then you have Jace, your counter package and removal package to sort of lock your opponent out. Um, so it's pretty yeah. straightforward deck. I mean, it's pretty clear how it works. You just sort of swing in an attack. However, it has a lot of elements of a lot of different decks, which I think is cool. Yeah, and that's one I really like it for that reason, yeah. that it's it's simple on the onset and in a format where you get some really janky things. Yeah. Some really off the wall, I'm going to win whenever <laughs> things. This is honestly kind of simple. Yeah. Um, it, it wins by beating, which... Yeah, which, it, I mean, you see, obviously, in Legacy. However, this yeah. is one of the decks that I think does it best. Yeah. Um, and it just has so many other ways to deal with the opponent and valuing them out of the game, uh, which is great. So yeah. very cool. Uh, we'll very quickly go through a sample sideboard. This is just a sideboard that sort of has come with this deck list. Um, sure. This can obviously be changed based on metagame and things like that. Uh, two more Swords to Plowshares to sort of give you that full play set against other creature decks. A Containment Priest, which is just an insanely cool. good card. Yeah, I love Containment Priest. <laughs> um, Aether Sworn Canonist, another great card. Uh, two fluster storms, so against storm decks or counter heavy decks, anything like that, you fluster yeah. storm. Uh, any of the combo decks, invasive surgery, which I think is interesting. It's counter target sorcery spell. I I don't know. It's interesting to me. Um, maybe we'll look at that another time. It's interesting. I don't know how I feel about that. I feel like there's better options. Yeah. Um, Likewise, <laughs> meddling mage to sort of deal with a very troublesome card. Uh, there's three of them in this sideboard. Very nice. Uh, two mind break traps, uh, again, to sort of deal with Storm yeah. for free, literally. Yeah. Uh, Nahiri, the Lithomancer. Interesting. Okay. Uh, equipment based, so that works. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. I think. I think, I think so. I think yeah. it works. Uh, two rest in peace to deal with graveyard, dredge, things like that, reanimator uh, oh, to deal with those. You talked about it so, in the dredge episode. Yeah. Everyone has something to Always hate on graveyard. Hate. Yeah. Um, so that's basically it. Um, it is a very straightforward deck in that you are just sort of beating your opponent. However, it does it so well and it can outpace so many decks that it, it just gets ahead very easily. Um, yeah. That being said, because it is a little bit sort of counter heavy and then also creature heavy and then doing a lot of different things, uh, sometimes you run into the issue where it's doing a little bit too much sure. at one time, um, which is something we've mentioned before that mm -hmm. when you're building a deck, you really want to do one thing really well versus doing a lot of things kind of on an okay front. Yes. Um, yeah, and it, it's tricky. Um, and in these <laughs> eternal formats, you really expect them to kind of be narrowed and focused yeah, a little yeah. more, would mm -hmm. you say? I would. I think, but this still being so simple and being so quick yeah. getting its wins out, right? Yep. So true name, it's only three yeah. to cast it. You get Stone it on turn two easy. Yeah, very simply. Stoneforge um, fetches out a threat on yeah. true name. 
So you very quickly become a threatening pro, uh, board presence. Yep. I love it. And I think because of the addition of Stoneforge and why that's sort of the namesake of the deck, mm-hmm. you're able to, because you can fetch these things out, and you can either fetch out a creature in the way of Batter Skull or uh, a sword to go on to a creature that you already have, yeah. it sort of makes it okay that you get to shove some of these counters and these draw spells in Definitely. because you are getting to fetch these things out. You've got mm-hmm. fetch lands to hit your land drops, so it really Definitely. makes it sort of an easy way to throw those things in there. Um, so I would say this deck doesn't necessarily suffer as much as some with the sure. like doing sure, too sure, much. Sure. However, that is something you can think about with yeah. this. You can very easily get just counters for days, but no creatures, or vice versa. So right. Um, but a very good deck, a very solid one, and a very prominent yeah. deck actually in Legacy. It's I don't know the percentage right off, but it's up there as four one color, of the better decks. Four color Stoneforge. Four okay. color Stoneforge. Uh, look nice. it up on MTG Top Eight. Four C Blade. That's where we usually yeah. look. Um, this actually, this deck list comes from Channel Fireball. Just to sort of credit them, we didn't mm-hmm. build this list, uh, but it is a very solid one. So yeah, um, these these vary a little bit. Really, yeah. only a number of removals per CC <laughs> main board and yeah. counter CC yeah. main board. Um, for sure yeah very cool thank you esper mtg yeah. for recommending that i believe we had a few in the past a few recommendations for stoneforge decks anyway and yeah. so we thought we'd sort of and finally really, get that one in there. really with kind of in the same vein as delver decks you're not going to see too much variance if you're including a card like stoneforge yeah so in delver you'd see a lot of the instants mm-hmm. sorceries uh, play on the stack flip a guy whatever blue red aggro with this you see a lot of um, honestly, Stoneforge and True Name go hand in hand a lot of the time. They do. Um, in various decks, and really, it's because they work so well. So mm-hmm. you see a lot of, uh, uh, well, really few equipments, but three at least. Yeah, three at least, the because the sword, the GT, and the Batter Skull are all like yeah. you have to include. I mean, they're yeah. just the best ones. Uh, blue and red being the most prominent colors in Legacy, which is why the blue red sword is in there. Yeah. Um, well, not even just pro, but having. I like the reach and the card advantage. You know yeah, that. no, no, so the the effects on it are fantastic card. as well. Yeah. Um, but there are different versions of the Stoneforge deck that are not four color. True. Um, some of them run like Abrupt Decay isn't necessarily in there, mm-hmm. and Leovold isn't always in there. Um, that's sort of an add in to this four color deck. Is list, this excluding so. red? Uh, yes. Is that the color is not in. Okay. That's the color. It is not. In. Yeah. Okay. Um. So. It's really cute. But yeah, very cool deck. Very glad nice. for that suggestion. Um. But that's it. Nice, I like it. Uh, one Legacy, deck, one deck format. a week feels kind of funny, but uh, it kind of works. That's a, that's a good one to start it off. Yeah. Um. All right. So we are also wrapping up. Well, not yet, but we are very in the, close to. Yes, we are almost done with our format breakdown series. Uh, and we talked early on about doing Commander and Popper mm-hmm. because those are little known. Well, not little known, but less popular, less in the mainstream than the other uh, yeah. formats. And we kind of wanted to shed a light on them for one. To talk and learn a little bit more about them for ourselves, yep, uh, and just see if there's new information to to bring you guys, That's exactly give you our it. take. Um, Commander, I'd actually argue, is more popular than some of the Eternal formats. Yes, on playability end. Yes, like, and it's in, in accessibility, it. absolutely. Um, <laughs> but I think yeah. everybody knows what Vintage is, though. I think. Yeah, I think so. Well, for the most part. Maybe. Legacy mm-hmm. for sure. I feel like most people know what Legacy is. Vintage, <sighs> little hit or miss, but I feel like you... I'm gonna say maybe not in name, but like people know that it's... that's a thing. Yeah, that maybe there's a format know. where you can basically do whatever you want. I haven't talked to a new player in a long time. I haven't I, either, so I don't. I'm not sure. Um, if you're a new player, hey, talk. To how's us. it going? <laughs> well, Welcome to the show. We're the perfect channel for you. <laughs> we are bad at magic. Okay. <laughs> uh, so with that, um. We're going to talk about Commander today. Uh, I enjoy Commander greatly. Uh, our streamers, Alex and Parks, do as well. Uh, Alex is obsessed. I mean, yeah. It's his favorite format. Yeah. It's, and it's many people's favorite format yeah. for good reason. And we'll kind of get into, the, <clears throat> into why. Um, and I'll start, I'll start by saying uh, Commander can seem really overwhelming at first. Um, but you should absolutely dip your toes in. It can be one of the most rewarding nights of magic, just playing one game yeah. for two hours. So They get wild. I have to say, because mm. I've only played Commander like twice, really once for real, um, and it was when you and I played. Yeah, I was very intimidated by the deck building process because sure. you have 100 card slots, you can only have a singleton of each thing except for basics. So like 
it was very intimidating at first because I was like, okay, I get to pick and choose. It felt more like a toolbox format than just a normal, you know, constructed game. And so I was like, what do I do? What do I do? But it actually turned out to be pretty straightforward. And I ended up with, you know, okay, I know I need some ramps. I've got my ramp cards early on. I've got my draw stuff. I've got my finishers. Like it actually worked out really well. And because it's sort of based off of this main commander card, Mm -hmm. you have a theme. So like you, you know what kind of of effects that you're looking for and things like that. So it actually worked out really well. Um, so I would highly suggest playing Commander. It's one of the most fun ways to play Magic, I think, Absolutely. ever. Absolutely. Um, With that being said, what the heck is Commander? What yeah, Will, tell us. I will, I will. <laughs> Commander stands for Elder Dragon Highlander. EDH. Which is a combination of two different formats. Um, it, it, okay. With that being said, I need to break into the, <laughs> break into the history just right away. Yeah. Um, so Highlander. 100 card singleton format uh it was very popular with judges uh back mm-hmm. in the day um when magic first started its pro scene um judges would go to a city uh wait on games wait on matches um not have anything to do so they kind of made this this format uh highlander differs in commander in one key aspect though which is where the elder dragon comes in so there used to be a format called elder dragon wars uh, yes, which was a, a proto commander almost, where you had one elder dragon mm-hmm. legendary card as your. I, it's hard for me not to say it's a commander, um, but <laughs> it's it's that's what you're basing your deck off of. I'm going to read the rules now because it's kind of interesting to see where commander has come from. This is this is pretty cool. Uh, so, elder dragon wars, the four uh, five elder dragons. I cannot pronounce this dude's name. Are Cadis Sabbath, Arcides Sabbath, Arcides. There's Arcades. Co- yeah. Sabbath. Whatever. Arce- Arcades. Like that. Sabbath. <laughs> Chromium. Of course, Nicol Bolas, and then Paladin Moors. And oh, the help. The Visitus. <laughs> As naughty. Look, Nicol Bolas killed all these guys for yeah, a reason. Yeah, so don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, all he these- didn't like their names. That's exactly why. All these guys are dead because their names are absolutely atrocious. I'm just going to put Nicol Bolas. I'm just going to hold them up here. Yeah. It doesn't matter what their names are. Nicol Bolas <laughs> ate them. But basically, what you would do in this group is you'd pick these cards at random, um, or you'd have them pre-picked in a pre-built like, uh, uh, Elder Dragon deck. Um, and just like Commander, you'd have a singleton format, cards based around that color. Right? So three more players are recommended. Um, players include basic lands, for each of the colors in your deck so you didn't get any funky lands yet um, in this format, Elder Dragon. Uh, Decks must have 20 to 24 creatures and have no more than one of the same creature, obviously. Um, All creatures must be 3-3 or better unless they have an ability. Then they may be a (laughs) 2-2. Players designate and announce at the beginning of the game three of their creatures as warlords, two of their creatures as captains. If an opponent kills the captain, Captain's controller takes two damage, and the destroyer gains two life. If a warlord is destroyed, the controller takes three damage, the destroyer gains three life, and then if the elder dragon, the commander, is killed, four damage, four life. Uh, No more than one of each spell may be included in the deck. Obviously, decide beforehand which cards are banned. Uh, Players begin with one of each land type already in play. I really like that. That was a cool rule. That's interesting, yeah. Players start with 25 life, and players have a 60-card minimum deck. Oh, excuse me, it's not 100, in addition to the land already in play. Uh... So this was a very complicated format. Yeah, jeez. Very tricky. Um, and this started in France f- with French ah, judges, okay. right? What do you mean, okay? <laughs> I'm just kidding. So <laughs> this was played a while, and then Kevin Deprez, Depre, Kev, I don't know how to say his name, a level four French judge decided, why not we combine the two formats and make it a little more streamlined, a little more simple, and still really fun and intuitive? That's exactly what they did. And that's where we get the French rules today. French rules, for those of you who don't know, are the 1v1 commander rules, the really uh, competitive commander rules. Yeah. Um, that has they have their own ban list, and I think that's the only way they differ. Like Soul Ring is banned. Yeah. That's there's probably a bunch the banning. That's my biggest ban, and Soul Ring should probably be banned. Yeah, um, yeah it's not. <laughs> I know. Um, but if you ever go to a like competitive one-on-one commander duel tournament mm-hmm. they will most likely follow french rules that being said interesting tidbit about commander is the rules vary yeah pretty much anywhere you go 
Um, it recently became a sanctioned format. Yeah. In uh, Wizards of the Coast's eyes, I guess. Uh, wh- whereas you can play it online now. Um, they linked the ban list somewhere before on their website. Yeah, I believe it's still up there. So it's and they're creating specific like decks for people. Yeah, and that was the big thing is that Wizards crafted Commander decks because they realized there was a demand. In Which people. fun fact for Commander players? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Commander decks are the, I think to my knowledge they're the only like pre-built products mm-hmm. that actually have held or exceeded their value from like msrp you're right like well, most of the time because they're like what 35 msrp mm-hmm. like 40, um, 40 bucks 35, 35 40 39. somewhere in there yeah. and so i think commander decks are the only product that have actually there's held that. there are there are very few but some uh like event decks uh from okay like first ravnica from um is it that they're the only ones that all of them have held their value not all of them have though i thought they did I, well okay held yes but not exceeded okay i mean you're getting a hundred cards well yeah and you're gonna have some just sweet things in there so yeah yeah that's fair yeah but you're absolutely they're right. very good at holding their value is really yes, the takeaway they are they partially are because commander's such a popular format yeah uh partially also because there's a lot of good things in those <laughs> decks um so yeah, that's a little bit of the history of Commander. Okay, um, a lot of history for this. I like it. Well, it, it's a lot of this is shrouded in layers of the internet, um, <laughs> how it just kind of spread around. Yeah. Um, an American, Sheldon Mannery, uh, brought Commander to the public, even though... Thanks, Sheldon. <laughs> even though French players, <laughs> judges specifically, made it, it it didn't really reach the States in yeah. You know, yeah. until 2007, I think. Was wow. what i read somewhere interesting unconfirmed yeah unconfirmed source it was from reddit uh that being said its current state everything's kind of wide open yeah uh commander has a band list um we talked about the leovol band and actually our second or third episode we talked about bannings and commander mm-hmm. um way back then uh so <laughs> the, the format does change the meta does change mm-hmm. that being said since the band list is so small with with the decks being so different and varied, the meta is kind of hard to pin down. Yeah, and right? so this was like actually one of my difficulties when we were talking about doing this episode. Like, mm. my initial thought was let's do Popper first because that's a little more defined, and we need more time on the Commander stuff. However, I don't think even given more time, we would be able to pinpoint down what's the best deck, what are the top decks. Like, well, we have stats on that. However, it's more like there's still a million other viable strategies. Right. Like, there's yes. so much that probably, you can do. Probably close to a million, yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, it's insane. Yes, So not only that, but it's hard to say which is, the, like, the winningest deck. Because most commanders played in a four-player yeah. game, just because you've got the best deck doesn't mean you'll win easily because there could be three other people gunning for you. Politics are a huge part of commander. Oh, yes. Um, um. So <laughs> just because you've got a very lethal, scary deck doesn't always mean... Unless it's Leovol, uh, <laughs> that you're gonna pull out the win. Leovol, right? doing the most. So that's tricky. That being said, um, I want to talk about the top five commanders. Okay. There's a wonderful resource online called EDH Rec, EDH R E C dot com. Yes. Wonderful place. Um, it it has given me all my information about commander basically. Mm-hmm. And with that, the top five commanders I want to talk about: Atraxa. The Praetor's Voice. No surprise. No. So Atraxa is insane busted. Yeah. Do you want to play Super Friends? Do it. Do you want to play Infect? <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Do it. Alone. You're not going to have friends. Um, <laughs> so she's crazy. Not only as a value creature for four, she comes in with Flying Trample, Lifelink, and Death Touch, I want to say. Yeah. I think that's right. I think so. And then Proliferate yes. is a thing with her. Yes. So on her, her like on on her card she says at the end of your at, yeah at the beginning of every end step yeah. proliferate it's every end step right uh, it is yes. every end step yeah so that's right actually because you're in a four player format uh, every cycle of turns you're gonna get four uh, proliferate uh, triggers so like yeah that's pretty good that's uh, really good yeah. you become a target with a track so that's instantly for sure. proliferate does it double or just add a counter it adds one adds a of that kind of counter so that's plus one plus one Neg one, neg one. Uh, loyalty. 
infect. <laughs> brick, if you want. <laughs> Any counter there is, it just brick. <laughs> bumps it up. Yeah, it's insane. So you can abuse a lot of things with that, and things get out of hand quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's no, there's, that's kind of obvious to me. She was one of the yeah, best commanders yeah. when she was printed in the last cycle, so she's still really popular. Her pre-built deck is super expensive too yeah. it's like it reached like 80 bucks at one point right i think at one point it might have over hit 100 i'm not i sure. wouldn't be surprised but honestly she's yeah i'm not super surprised good. either sticking with this uh this recent printing brea i was hoping brea would show up yeah i really like that brea second most used commander um with a lot of with artifacts being super prevalent in commander mm-hmm. uh a commander that takes advantage of the number of artifacts you have and gives you a bunch of outs for him is really really good. Yep. Uh, you can abuse a lot of unlimited combos with Brea. Yeah. And having her as your commander uh, gives you a really good color selection since she's four color. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's kind of got unlimited combos built in that yeah, way. So she does. Brea is awesome. Um, Marine is number three. I don't know what Marine does. I've never seen a Marine deck played. I'll be honest. What is it? I'll tell you, Kev. I don't know what it is. <laughs> oh, Kev. Kev's draw. It's not the one I made, is it? No. No, 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 no. Your commander's got a weird, weird, own, weird name. Oh, Reanimator. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Glenn Neltop. I do know what this is. This was recently reprinted in the oh, Anthrology yeah, deck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, Never very mind. good I, commander. I totally lied to you, my friend. has this deck. Uh, that is really good. <laughs> Never mind. Um, <laughs> she is the th- uh, third most played commander. Um, Reanimator always being a really busted good strategy. Kind of makes sense. Yep. Uh, Oloro, Ageless Ascetic is another one. I love he this card. He is sweet. Yeah. Um, you gain life at the beginning of your upkeep. Whenever you gain life, you can pay and draw cards. Um, and he was also, if I'm not mistaken, the mm-hmm. first commander to do something from the command zone. Um, I don't know if is he, that. I don't know if he was the first, <laughs> but I don't know. He might have been. Um, what was he printed? 2013. Maybe then. I believe so. I might be incorrect on that. Correct me if I am wrong. But obviously now we've got commanders that do that. Right. Recent printing. Um, however, I believe this was the first instance where it actually did some sort of effect from the command zone. So you didn't necessarily mm-hmm. have to play it to get value. Yeah, um, which is sweet. But this being an Esper colors, Esper is super good. Yeah. As I learned. <laughs> yeah, Esper. I mean, Esper is great everywhere, <laughs> especially in Commander. Um, yeah. You can do some broken, broken things. Um, and the last one I want to show you, Kev. I think would be your, your favorite. Yeah. This I is thought this cool would one. be your favorite. I like this uh, one. Nekusar the Mind Razor. Uh, at the beginning of each player's draw step, the player draws an additional card. Mm-hmm. Whenever an opponent draws a card, Nikki Star the Mind Razor deals one damage to that. Infinite player. combo for days. Yeah. Uh, I love this. So, Locust God, anybody? Yep. <laughs> That's why I thought you'd like it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Nekki Star's sweet, and there's, again, unlimited combos to abuse with him. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want to plug them, go find them. Um, they're very fun. I want to move on, though. Yep. So, that's a little bit of our meta talk. Yeah. And now I'm going to talk about my personal. Not oh. meta per se, but my personal favorite cards in Commander. Okay, so I'm interested to hear this. They're not Commanders because I want to stick a little bit more to the the deck building sort okay. of thing. Okay, cool. Uh, so in the five colors, I picked five five cards in each five color uh, to talk about. Number one, start with blue because I know how you like blue. I do. Even like though blue. we learned we should go in Wooburg order, <laughs> we're gonna start with blue. Yep. Uh, Cyclonic Rift. This yeah, this is stable. a must include in any deck that has blue. It just does so much. Well, it saves your booty is what it does. Well, yeah, but anytime. It, the fact is, because it's a four player format and it's all permanents, you get so much value out of it. Yeah, like it's not exactly just why. like hosing a player; you're hosing three other players. Mm-hmm. So you're gonna you're in a very commanding position uh, after you play Cyclonic Rift. Precisely, <laughs> sweepers are super highly valued in commander. Yes. While this isn't a blow everything up sweeper, it's it clears the board for you. Yeah. Which is awesome. Mm-hmm. Um and you will get to that mana very quickly where you can overload it pretty easily, I'd say. Mm-hmm. So Psych Rift is ooh, it's a must Such have a in a blue deck. Um White. This is honestly my might be my favorite card for Commander. Sun Titan. Infinite combos for days. <laughs> oh god, Sun Titan. So Oh man. If you flicker this bad boy, there are so many things you can get. You can get uh, Aura of Silence, for instance. Um, Sun Titan, if you don't know, says uh, whenever he enters or attacks, you can get a uh, permanent CMC3 or less from your graveyard, put it on the battlefield. 
comes in instantly. That's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> Aura of Silence to stop all enchantments and uh, whatnot. Mm-hmm. You can get lands to trigger landfall triggers or just to fetch stuff. Yep. That's pretty neat. Um, if you, so let's say they blew up your soul ring. Well, I just get soul ring Doesn't back. Doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> Flickering this dude is. Yeah, it's it's one of the most broken things insane. you can do in Commander. Yeah. It's really quite good. Sun Titan is a monster. Um, not only is that effect sweet, he's also yeah. a beater. So yeah, that's nice. huge. Uh, for black though, my second favorite one, Shaildred. <laughs> Shaildred, the Whispering One. Oh, so good. This this is a card you can include in any black deck simply yeah. because it reanimates stuff and kind of controls the board a little bit for you, mm-hmm. um, which I love. You desperately need that in Commander, and putting this threat out there. Exceptional. She's also a, a 6 6 with Swamp Walk. <laughs> that ain't so bad. Um, I'm going to talk about green before red because red is interesting. Uh, Court of Calling is 